welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast of Wake Up Church. We've been asleep for too long. This is your host, Dr. Rosalind Best. Today's podcast is being brought to you by bestlegacyfoundation.org. Please visit the website for opportunities for scholarships, mentorships, and a chance to leave a lasting legacy. Today's podcast is entitled, Don't Allow an Attraction to Become a Distraction. Let's get it, church. Oh, yeah. I can come to you from the experience of many times when I go work out at the gym or I'm somewhere where there's very attractive men, there is an attraction. Sometimes you meet someone and you both smile or you you nod or you see them and you say, wow, that's a very, that's a handsome man. That's a very attractive man. Um, being that I'm completely heterosexual, I find men attractive. And, um, and there are times when men have found me to be attractive. Now, there is no sin in having an attraction, but it's what do we do? The Bible says that if a man looks at a woman, that's not the sin. Looking at a woman is not the sin. Looking at a man is not the sin. If you look and lust, if you allow the looking to lead to a lusting, it says you've already committed adultery in your heart. So it's about the thoughts. It's what we are thinking. It's what we're entertaining that it needs to align with Christ or it's going to align with our flesh. We can't have it both ways. Now, I met a very handsome young man. He was swimming like a dolphin, just really just in that pool. It was just magical watching him. And from a distance, I thought we were making eye contact. I really wasn't sure, but I stayed focused on what I was doing. And I got out of the pool and went over to the jacuzzi. And not very shortly thereafter, he repeated the same thing and came and got in the jacuzzi. We struck up a conversation. We were talking about being chosen and being awake and all of the great spiritual things that sounded great. And here I am feeling like, wow, you know, he and I appear to be on the same playing field, same thought pattern. He made a flirtatious comment and I reciprocated. Nothing sexual, just about how his smile was so just heartwarming and heartfelt and he just had a beautiful smile and my charisma. And, and I'm thinking, Lord, <laughs> could this be my knight in shining armor? Could this be the man of my dreams? I can't say I didn't think that way because I'm human. I did. And I desire to be married. And it just came to my awareness after having probably a 30 minute conversation in the jacuzzi, we're laughing and smiling and him just knowing that his physique is very aligned with perfection. And so he said, I was sharing with him about my book S-H-I-T happens in church. And I suggested that he get a copy and read it. So he says, sure, I'll purchase one. And uh, we went to our cars and I got out a book and he gave me his phone number and basically was saying something about he'll give me feedback or blah, 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 or we can schedule a time to come to the gym together. But one of the onlookers said to me, as me and her were drying off and he was waiting for me, she said, he's a really good looking guy. Uh, I think, I think he's gonna ask you out. I said, you think so? She goes, oh yeah, he was looking at you like he was very interested. I said, man, that would be nice. So as I mentioned this conversation to her before our separation, I said, yeah, uh, the older lady thought uh, you were gonna potentially ask me out. 
with the expectation of hoping that he would, he said, oh, I would love to, but I'm married. Huh? You have entertained a 30 to 45 minute conversation with me. We've had mildly flirtatious conversation and you never mentioned that you were married? So, there was an attraction. I was not going to allow that to become a distraction. Now, in order to avoid that, the Bible says, flee from youthful lust. I made sure I didn't go to the gym at times that I knew he would periodically be there. I intentionally altered my time of going to avoid meeting and contacting him because this created an awkward scenario and no harm, no foul, but it's just the fact that if I had been not, not living a life that's pleasing to Christ, I could have easily uh, entertained a fornicating, adulterous scenario with this man because the energy was there. So, I don't play with myself. I know for certain what is an attention grabber for me. I don't watch, um, what's that? Uh, I don't watch the men dancing and grinding and winding. I, I don't. I don't entertain things that are lustful because I know it can lead to self-stimulation and I had an addiction of masturbation that I refuse to entertain. I treat it just like drugs. I say no. I'm not going to do that. So if that's something that you are doing, I pray that God will bring you deliverance and allow you to know the liberty of being penetrated and loved in the proper setting that God designed, which is marriage. So I want the best for all of my friends, male and female, but you can't allow yourself to entertain someone that will derail God's purpose for your life. Eve knew what God said about the fruit on that specific tree, but yet she looked and she saw that it was good looking. It was pleasing to her sight. She didn't sin by looking at it. She sinned by consuming it when God had said, that's a no-no. If you know adultery is a no-no, then don't entertain it. It's about the power of choice. The Bible says we are drawn away by our own lust. You can't blame someone for A, B, and C when you're responsible for X, Y, and Z. It's our own lust. If you are entertaining things that will sexually arouse you, hell, they had an Eminem commercial with a sexy Eminem sex sales but we have to be aware of the devices that are being used in media as a means to arouse the music is so brazen so so brazen it doesn't suggest sexual it describes eating the grocery eating the ass and eating everything and sucking and eating her waffle and it leaves nothing to imagination so there's no sin in having an attraction. It is a sin when that sin becomes a distraction away from what God has promised, away from what God, when you make a commitment, God says it's better for a man not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. God despises that because you asked him to seal and, and, and secure something in his sight. And God does not take covenant lightly. He's a covenant-keeping God. 
And so when we make covenants, we have to be careful not to break those covenants because you don't know how God's going to feel about you breaking something that he said you got a thumbs up on. He doesn't give you a pass to tap new ass. He doesn't. I don't care if it's male, female. He does not give you a pass to go get a new piece of ass. Think about it. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it's good for you. Some of the most beautiful display of clothing is on a mannequin. It looks so good on that mannequin. It may not look the same on your body, but what is appealing is the way that you see that it looks on that mannequin. But that doesn't mean that's how it's going to look on you. So we cannot be swayed by what we see. You're going to always run into attractive people. That's the nature of the beast. Don't allow what you see to be something that you lust after. That's why going to the strip club and the titty bars and all these places, they only invoke a strong hole of lust that you can't shake it. You thinking about titties and ass the whole time you trying to go to sleep. Or you think about titties and ass the whole time you're with your wife because you saw those new titties and new ass. I know I'm being blunt, but I want to give it to you raw. Raw and nasty. God does not want us to be distracted by what we are attracted to. You look and you keep moving. If you can't look, act like, act like Ray Charles, James Brown. Act like you're wearing shades. Close your eyes. Ja, 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 ja. Do whatever you have to do to make sure you don't entertain a spirit of lust because that is what we cannot be entrusted with. Spirits that don't draw us closer to God, but will drive us further into sin. So be careful with your mouth, what you say. Be careful with your eyes, what you see. Be careful with your ears, what you hear. We have to be careful where we go. Church, I pray that you receive this message today and that you don't allow the things that you see to linger. If it lingers and you're thinking about it over and over, that means you're meditating on it. And if it's not God's word and if it's not uplifting and upbuilding, it will draw you into a web of defilement, mental, sexual arousal. You see yourself effing this person. You see yourself having sex with this person. You see yourself giving oral or receiving from that person. We have to call the thing a thing. If it's a distraction, it can destroy your attraction to God. When we sin, we don't want to be around God. When we sin, we don't want to be in God's presence. When we sin, we want to be in our flesh, in our mess, doing what we want to do and not feeling the consequences of thinking about disappointing our God. We have to be aware that the days of evil are among us. It is upon us. We don't have to be in this world and act like this world. We can just be in this world and act like the God that we serve. Take on that stronghold of lust and win that battle. Kill that Goliath that has you buying magazines and watching porn and things that will keep you in sexual bondage. I'm here to tell you, you can be free completely by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind all, uncon all contaminated spirits of lust and infidelity and adultery and masturbation and bestiality and everything that would destroy your connection to God. Church, let's pull it down. Let's destroy it because we've got greater to do in this kingdom.
God bless you. I love you. Let's do better starting today.